the risk register. The risk register is made up of a number of tabs along the bottom with the first tab being the front sheet and the control sheet. The control sheet has a placeholder for your company name, text in blue donates a configuration and it holds a place for your company logo. The version control is in line with the documents and records policy and the data classification policy and fully meets the requirements of ISO 27001 and it is here that you would record the version, the changes, when it was last modified and whom by and the date. The risk register comes with a built-in dashboard that auto populates once you complete the risk register. The dashboard shows you the number of risks that you have and their status open or closed. It shows you the current status of risk treatment in terms of are you avoiding, reducing, accepting or transferring risk and how many. And it provides you with information around the risk level when the risk was first identified and the residual risk. So residual risk is the risk once controls have been put in place to mitigate any risks and then to demonstrate their effectiveness. The risk register itself can look quite daunting in that it includes some key information and control points around original risk and residual risk and it includes elements that allow you to manage risk as part of the ongoing man risk management process. So let's take a look at some of those columns. Again, blue text donating configuration where we would put our company name. We would allocate a reference. We would allocate an external reference which could be the clause in a standard or an external help desk ticket or a customer reference number that identified the risk. We would have a description of the risk, the date that it was open, the date that it was closed, the asset to which the risk applies and the owner of that asset, the threat, the vulnerability, and then the outcome or the potential outcome associated with that risk. We would record whether the risk impacts the CIA being the confidentiality, integrity or the availability of data. We would record what the existing control was and then we would allocate that a score for impact and likelihood. The scoring is provided as standard uh, scoring and wording in the scoring tab but this is highly configurable and you can change this to reflect your own organisational requirements. The risk classification and treatment shows us to what level we would accept risk and then how we would apply our treatments across the various categories. So we allocate our risk impact likelihood which produces a score and that will provide us with a risk rating. We assign our risk a risk owner we decide on our risk treatment, whether we avoid, reduce, accept or transfer, and then we implement our treatment plan. Our treatment plan is allocated a treatment owner with a treatment date, and as this is an ongoing document that we will continue to manage and report to the management review team meeting, we're going to record whether or not this risk is open or closed. As part of our residual risk recording, we are now going to record what our new control is and we're going to rescore the impact and the likelihood. Now, hopefully that score has gone down to show that the new control has had a positive impact on mitigating that risk. This will give us a new risk rating. We're then going to allocate the date that the risk was last reviewed. Now, risk should be reviewed at least annually and based on risk themselves. So the more risky a risk is, the more critical a risk is, then the more often you're going to review it. You would put the last review date and the next review date and then allocate notes as appropriate. So that represents your high level risk register, managing risk and residual risk, producing a dashboard that you can report to the management review team meeting and appropriate stakeholders, 
and including appropriate document control. Thank you.